Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it's really a great pleasure to be here today. Um, I have to tell you, it's my first time in Moldova. I'm very, very pleased to be here. And also would like to take the opportunity to congratulate the government of Moldova of taking as one of the first countries in the region this new program of talking and sharing and educating women uh, about sexual and reproductive rights. Uh, this is a very, very important step, I guess, in the region's history because we women especially feel a lot of times that our issues are not addressed. Bună ziua, toată lumea! Vorbesc puțin românește, pentru că m-am născut în România, în Transilvania. Vin dintr-o familie maghiară și am învățat limba română la școală, ca o limba străină. De aceea o să mă întorc la limba engleză, pentru că e mult mai ușor pentru mine. Mulțumesc. Um, so it's very interesting to, to be here for, uh, for me because this event in Antalya, where I live now, in, in Istanbul actually, but of course in Turkey, having a Turkish husband, um, was very surprising uh, to be in that region. You know that uh, especially a Muslim country usually doesn't address such kind of problems so easily or they're not so open about it. Um, and I was very proud to be part of that program. And I have to tell you, I feel myself as a very modern woman. Uh, I'm 35 years old. Uh, I don't have kids. Uh, I'm, I finished university. I'm educated. I love my work as an actress and producer. Uh, I have my own hobbies, which I love very much. And with my husband, we didn't decide yet to have children. And this uh, subject actually, especially in the Hungarian media where I work mostly as an actress, uh, raised awareness when I realized that a lot of women, especially on my social media, on Instagram, Facebook, they write to me, they always, they're keen to ask me, how is that possible you don't have kids yet? And it's very difficult for a woman to express and explain this issue to other people in the society. And I really wanted to share with you that I personally uh, hope that we, one day we will have this subject, having it only for ourselves, for the family, for women and their partners to decide about, and not to have a pressure from the society about this subject. Because I think if a person really wants kids, can organize its life around it. And I really believe that women who are educated and they have all the chances in life to establish themselves and they be f to, to be fulfilled and happy, they will be the best of the mothers. So I would really be happy to, to continue this discussion in Moldova because I think you all made a cha change in your community by coming here today. And this is a very important thing because that's how changes happen. People participating and talking about it. Um, and the, on the other hand, I'm also a sufferer of domestic violence. Uh, I was born in Romania and the times when uh, you know, 89, it was a different political agenda. A lot of women never had chances to study. They were domestic. They were at home working mothers. And unfortunately, in the region, I'm sure in Moldova, you also face such kind of problems. A lot of men spend their time in the bars after work. So there was an issue of alcoholism and abuse or violence in the families. And because of this subject, because I experienced this, I know a lot of women and children, daughters, girls, also sons experience this issue. It affects very much their sexual health later on. They choose their partner based on what kind of uh, model they have seen as a father or, as a, or a mother. And I really hope that one day we'll be able to have a healthy society to help us uh, to become better in our roles as as people and as parents, and not only by the rules what we have seen and brought from home.
from our families because we have to see positive roles as well and we have to support each other we have to share the subject another very interesting thing which happened in in uh, Antalya and I, I personally was very surprised in Turkey to talk about this kind of subjects I'm sure in your society is also in a way taboo and stigma we were discussing in a funny way about menstruation and very openly I share you a secret first time openly a lot of people said out the word vagina, which for us it was very surprising but very liberating so I wish you to talk more about these subjects not only in the schools but in your own societies words which are our related to our biology it has nothing to do with women's rights this is a human right this is the right of the people to talk about our biology, the way how we were made. It's nothing exceptional. We have to talk more about, and we have to talk about openly about uh, periods which we usually don't address or we don't share with the male participants of the society. We should address more. One day I tell you a funny story my Turkish husband, um, one night he was coming home with his business uh, man friends, and I had my period. So I asked my husband, like, would you be kind to go and in the middle of the night find some tampons for me? And he's like, you know, I never did anything like this before. For a Turkish man, this is really <laughs> awkward, believe me. It's, um, it's a very surprising thing. So they went out. They're sitting, four of them in the car, all businessmen. They never discussed this subject. They're Turkish, Muslim. This subject is definitely not a subject they would ever talk about. That night, they realized that any pharmacy they would go, they couldn't find tampons. They went to the gas stations. They couldn't find tampons. And that night, my husband realized that what kind of issues we face women, actually, in the society, that many times we cannot reach our hygienic needs. And he told me that if I can do anything about this, and if we men should do anything about this, we should address the problem and we should talk about it openly because this shouldn't happen this way. So there are so many subject act, subjects actually about women, what we don't address, we don't talk, people try to hide it up. Even the men who were trying to serve him at the counter, they were wrapping up the hygienic pads in a bag where you would hide alcohol normally. That means they try to keep it as a secret. But a woman having a period is not a secret. It's a biological thing actually giving us the right to have children. And the society has to address this, has to address this issue. And I think they should have a very healthy conversation around it. So I think education is the most important. What we do here is actually educating each other and ourselves. That's why Antalya, it was so important to me and having Natalia as a supermodel, as a mother of five, as an amazing activist over, it was a great pleasure for me and also uh, I realized that a lot of women in the world who were educated before, they're much easier to address the subject and talk about the problems and educate their counterparts, their other female friends about it. And that's how we become more liberated, more happy as women and as men as well, because believe me, in Antalya, in the audience, they were men who they, in the really first time in their life, life opened up about this subject. And they shared their stories as children, as young men, as grown up men, what kind of problems they're facing or what kind of st stigma and taboos they're facing in the society. So for, it, for us, it was really an amazing experience. And I really wish that in Moldova, something like this will start, the conversation will start, and you will continue addressing the problems. But as I always say, education is a key. And the right to decide about whether or not or how many children to have is the decision of the person or the family, the partner of the women. So uh, I think. This has to change, and hopefully we, all of us, will be able to be part of that change. Thank you so much.